Okay, welcome back. This is our last video for the uh, first unit. Um, we, when we last left off, we were talking about Paleolithic art, um, and that led up to the Neolithic transformation. And the last thing we were talking about was how Neolithic societies are different from the Paleolithic culture, mostly because we're looking at agricultural societies, uh, people who farm and keep uh, livestock, and also these people lived in settled communities, villages, and towns. Uh, sometimes they were walled, something similar to cities. And the Neolithic uh, transformation begins around somewhere between 10,000 and 8,000 BC. Although it's different all around the world, there are certain places where it didn't truly begin until about 2000 BC. E. But uh, 10,000 to 8,000 BCE is the general date for the start of the Neolithic transformation. Uh, the, we're going to be talking about uh, two main sites, Katul Hoyuk in Turkey and Jericho in Israel and on the West Bank. And, but mostly we're going to be talking about Katul Hoyuk. Katul Hoyuk is, uh, here's the uh, map of the site right there. And uh, one of the things that's interesting about Katahoyuk is a uh, found a Neolithic uh, town. And it was built in a kind of an unusual fashion. The, uh, the village was, or town was built where there's no streets. All the, all the houses are built butt up against each other so that the only way that someone could uh, get into any individual houses through the roof. There are no, there are no doors and there's no roads. Um, and that actually made for a very unusual means of self-defense because it meant that anyone who might attack this community, they'd have to kind of invade each house separately and they'd have to dive down into a dark um, room unno not knowing who might be waiting for them. And so we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Cattle uh, There are a couple of things I wanted to point out about well, some things we find in Katahoyuk. Number one, uh, we see a, a lot of evidence of a continuation or continuity with what we saw in Paleolithic art. Like if you look at these wall frescoes or wall paintings, like this one, painting of bulls and figures, or this one, we see similar celebration of hunting and gathering, even though this was a agricultural community, a celebration of hunting, a celebration of animals and wild animals, and especially of uh, bulls and bison. And that's one thing that's similar. Also, if you look at this kind of throne room or um, or a reconstruction of a, of a shrine room, it also has um, sculptures based off of uh, bulls as well as incorporating actual bull horns as part of the decorations for the room. Uh, we also see, like in the uh, Paleolithic art, we see a celebration of wild animals like wild cats, like lions and uh leopards. In this case we have a, a wall carving of two leopards facing each other. Um, and similar we see the same thing here on this uh, seated goddess right here also from Katahoyuk where she's seated on a throne and the throne is made of two kind of uh, lionesses or leopard creatures as the two sides of the of the throne or the seat that she's sitting on. And notice of course that she is somewhat reminiscent to us because she's very similar to the Venus figures that we saw um, through a lot of the different Paleolithic period, very similar to the uh, Venus of Willendorf. Uh, I said I would talk a little bit about Jericho. Um, Jericho was a little bit later and the other main main thing that I want to point out about Jericho is that we see a different kind of art in Jericho. Uh, we see some of the same kind of things but one of the unusual things we see in Jericho is that we also see a um, a use of human skulls where apparently they're performing some kind of ancestor worship where they're taking the skulls of, of deceased ancestors and then replastering them to kind of recreate um, the uh, the ancestor. I want to go back just for a second to talk about one other thing about Katahoyuk. Um, I don't have the image of it here but there is among the wall paintings there's one wall painting where it is um, it's a the very first example we have of an image as a map where it includes a an above view of the city kind of like this map right here along with also a, um, a location of a volcano relatively nearby it um, and that's pretty interesting as well 
So there, the Neolithic culture um, is not just in these two main sites. It does start to spread all over the world. And one of the things that we see is also the development of ceramics in the Neolithic period. And one of the most interesting things about the development of ceramics is how quickly it becomes almost an international universal style that spreads over most of the Middle East um, and into a lot of Asia, all the way as far as China and parts of Europe, we see the same um, or very similar types of styles, similar styles of decoration, similar forms. Uh, but this Ibex beaker is uh, one of the oldest and one of the most beautiful uh, Neolithic uh, ceramic pieces that we have available to us. Lastly, uh, I want to talk about how um, sometimes things change and we have new information. Uh, in this case, about uh, a new site called Gobleki Tepe. Uh, when I started this class two years ago, Gobleki Tepe was just a footnote in my notes. I just kind of mentioned it. But in the recent times, there's been more and more documentaries and research done about Gobleki Tepe. And we now know that it's not only the oldest Neolithic site that we found, or perhaps maybe more importantly, it's a structural site in the Mesolithic, because it's hard to tell whether these were truly Neolithic people, whether they actually practiced farming. Uh, but either way, it is one of the oldest sites, and it is definitely the oldest religious site that we've found. That's another thing that's kind of interesting, is that the two other sites, Catalhoyuk and Jericho, were both settled communities. They're sites where people lived. This is not a town. What we're looking at here is actually a temple structure, uh, or at least we think it's a temple structure. There's no evidence that people lived here, but there's evidence that people built this and, and that they came here supposedly to do some sort of worship. And here are a few more images of what the site is look, looks like. And it's these kind of pits dug into the ground with these rock walls on either side, and then supported by these giant um, kind of uh, posts made out of stone and then the stones are carved and they're carved apparently to uh, represent various kinds of deities and so it's a an amazing site and more and more is coming out about it and so one of the things to take from that is that archaeology is constantly changing and dates are frequently being pushed back so 20 years ago, if you'd asked someone when the Neolithic period began, people would have said 7,000 or 6,000 BCE, whereas we now are pretty sure it started more like 9,000 BCE. Okay, all right, that's the end of these three lectures, and thank you very much.